Good afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. It's Friday and the end of another short week. My name's Jeannie D. Indeed, and I'm Danila Chris. I hope you guys are ready for the weekend. Joining us in the loft today, we have two-time SAFTA winner, Warren Masemola. He joins us in the loft. I mean, this guy plays from gangster yeah. to the gay guy in the series, which is really, really cool. So you can be unpacking the guy behind all of these really cool stories that he tells on the show today. Plus, we're going to find out if he's a web whiz quiz winner on the show today. We're going to, him and I are going to go head-to-head. -head. You're going to be the quiz master yeah. today on the show. So we're going to find out how much he knows about those things. This man's life is incredible. I cannot wait to unpack it. And if you're hungry this yeah. weekend, we're going to be showing you how to get ready for winter with a delicious cauliflower soup. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Oh, delicious. We're also going to be chatting to a fantastic young actress called Lunati um, Pofu. And she's actually on that new drama series mm. on SABC uh, called Ngozi that shows every single Sunday night. So we're going to be chatting to her as well. Now, our first guest today is an actor who has faced many a challenge in his life and taken each of them in his stride. At the age of six, he was diagnosed with a hair loss condition, alopecia. But instead of holding him back, he used it to his advantage in securing roles. Now, he's played the most diverse collection of characters, which I love most about him, from terrifying criminal masterminds to flamboyant, well-loved Togo Chanel, uh, which won him a SAFTA for the Best Supporting Actor. My friend, when you know, try like I'm back up with the car, I'm a rock, 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 i am a rock 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 i am a rock
helped me to find different ranges uh, using my voice for voiceovers and also in performance. So yeah. just using different pitches for your character can actually make you different from other people or the characters I've played before. So I do get bothered a lot. I do. I do go beyond the script and the character in preparation for my work. I love my work. Yeah, and you invest, clearly, so much of yourself, you invest so much of your talent and your skill sets in what you do, which I think is so brilliant about your work. Uh, earlier on, you mentioned this idea of the stigma and trying to sort of break out of those deals. I know that you cycle, you love yeah. cycling. I mean, you walked from Joburg to Pretoria. Yeah. Uh, you love art. These are all things that come with a lot of stigmas, particularly in South African culture. Absolutely. You know, when I was in drama school, it was a bit expensive to travel by taxi to school. Uh -huh. So I bought my myself a bicycle. So I found it cheaper to travel on bicycle than a taxi. Mm -hmm. And it was also fitness, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and a few years later, I bought myself a bicycle, I packed my car, I challenged myself to enter the 94.7 race. Oh, awesome. And I saw it as an investment in my health because we find that a lot of people look 40 when they are 27 and they are actors. And that's why you find people saying that people from America uh, look much healthier yeah. than, than we do, you know? Mm. And so I decided to do that. And, and people think like, why cycle? You know, you're an actor on TV. You see a lot of people who who migrate between the city to city mm -hmm. just to get to work. And you think of this person yeah. cycling from here to there, but they're actually doing 50 kilometers a day. Sure. You know, and, and I see that a lot in my life. I come across a lot of people in my life and I engage with people. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that I should travel. Like I went to Zimbabwe, to the Vic Falls for New Year's Eve in mm -hmm. 2015. And I realized that people know my work there. And just trying to talk to them in English is not enough. So mm -hmm. you learn a little bit of their language. So I also learned how to say, I love you in in in, in Debele from uh -huh. Zimbabwe. Uh, what is it? Dinakunda. Dinakunda. So there's in Debele in South Africa and there's in Debele in Zimbabwe. Yeah. We also just learned that there was Tosa or Tosas who yeah. migrated to Zimbabwe from the Eastern Cape Verde. So a lot comes up when you travel through mm. conversations. You learn how people live and you learn a lot about yourself from other people and that's yeah. That's how I find my life. You definitely do oh. embrace life and you definitely dive into everything that you do. But I want to go back to the beginning when you when you were first diagnosed with alopecia. And also you embraced that and allowed that to be. But I mean, firstly, what is alopecia? So alopecia is a condition where you do not have hair cells. So yeah. the cells that produce hair in your body are non-existent. Yeah. But it hit me when I was six. I didn't know what was going on. I started getting ringworms on my head. And I used to be an athlete at school. Yeah. So if I was maybe position one or two, then other children in the stands would be like, Warren, your hair is falling back behind. You know? <laughs> Stop, <laughs> collect your hair on the track. You know? It used to be very funny, but yeah. that gave me more speed to be like, oh, they see me mm -hmm. and they don't see everybody else exactly. on the track. You know, um, I grew up and after school, would be walking home from school and people would be running in the rain and my friends would be like, no, no need for you to run, Warren. Just stand in the rain, let the rain water your hair so that it grows. Oh, you know? cute. So there were so many jokes that by the yeah. time I was a teenager, I would already grew a thick skin yeah. um, around the issue of no hair and alopecia. And after matric, I decided, no, man, I must talk about this condition because clearly people don't know about it. Yeah. I've been acting for like 10 years now and still a lot of people don't know about it. They hit me on social media and be like, why doesn't he have eyebrows though? Why doesn't he have <laughs> eyelashes though? And I probably feel like I've answered it 10 times before, but it just goes to show that a lot of people don't know. So you are so work. wonderful. Thank you so much. You've got such an amazing career ahead of you because you just, just got such a fantastic, magical energy. So we worked out that he loves, obviously, acting. He loves all of the extreme sports, but how well does he know his tech knowledge? Later on the show, we'll be putting Warren's tech knowledge to the test in our web whiz quiz. After the break, we sit down with rising star, the beautiful Lunati Mampofu. Get a taste of the smooth life and you could win big when you buy Tropica. Follow the entry details on your Tropica bottle and stand a chance to win daily airtime prizes, a weekly giveaway of an experience with a Tropica Island of Treasure contestant, sunglass hat vouchers, Daniel Klein watches or LG home appliances. You could also win the grand prize of a brand new Kia Sportage. T's and C's apply on tropica.co.za. There's nothing smoother than winning with Tropica. Don't forget to watch Tropica Island of Treasure Seychelles every Monday at 7.30 on SABC3.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, our next guest is one of the rising stars on local television scene. We get to see her every Sunday as Zikona on the new SABC1 TV drama Ngozi, a series that tackles road safety issues in South Africa. Joining us now is the gorgeous Lunati Mampofu. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> good. You know what I... There's this one quote that says, you know, it takes about 15 years to become an overnight success. Yes. <laughs> and reading about your life, that really did, you know, I thought about your career because you, it started off so long ago and you've done yes. so much work <laughs> and only now are you starting to be recognised. Yes. Tell us about your, your character now on Ngozi. Um, Zikona is a young student. Yeah. She comes from the Eastern Cape. She grew up with her father and finally moves to Johannesburg to live with her mom. She goes to culinary school and she's starting to become a chef. Um, but because of life situations and how things just are in general, like been very unpredictable, um, she grew up very um, not so fortunate, yeah. you know, like yeah. most of her friends and people that are around her and stuff like that. So um, she's just a driven young girl who's just trying to make things work for herself and for her mom right now because her dad is now gone yeah. and stuff like that. So, but she goes through so much throughout the journey of um, the storyline. And obviously Ngozi is an accident and this massive accident has just happened. And she finds out that she now cannot walk. So oh. it's now that kind of feeling of her trying to figure out how am I going to now like carry on yeah. and live this life with everything that's just gone down. But she's a, she's feisty. It's and quite she's an interesting <laughs> character to play though. Yes, How did is. you end up playing her? Like when, did, were you sent the script or what was the auditioning process like? Um, no, I just, well, my agent called and, <laughs> and told me this is um, the series that's going on right now. And she thinks that I'd be great for it. I'm always, always cast for little girls. Oh, really? <laughs> like in high school and stuff like that, which is something I'm hoping will change yeah. <laughs> at some point. <laughs> but um, she was like, she's young and she kind of reminds me of you, you know, when she got this, the brief. You don't give up. You're always just trying and trying and trying. And I feel like maybe you will relate to her a bit easy. So I just went to the casting and um, I feel like they loved me on, like, Day one, like I, I knew it, like I knew I had it. Well, you are um, very lovable. And <laughs> you're a very serious actor. I mean, you studied acting in South Africa. Yes. And then you went to the New York Film Academy yes, as well. I did. What an experience. It was. <laughs> it was an experience. Uh, um, it was tough. You go through so many like hardships because you're around a lot of different people who really don't know yeah. if that's what they want to do, but they can afford it. And then you get people like me who like, yeah hustled and Super you know and who are really passionate about it and it's just those just um what do you call it those different situations in life where you you are around people that you that don't know what they want but you have to always prove yourself and show yeah. them that listen this, this is what you hard. want you know and then the school itself is a brilliant school you know you promise the world and you get it yeah um you have like all these amazing actors come into the school and um interview us or teach us stuff or wow. you have a So it definitely a. does put you at a better footing, I suppose, to start a career. It does. It does. Um, because you learn so much from yeah. the experience. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you studied. It doesn't matter who you know. If you're good, you're good. If you're good, you're good. Yeah. And yeah. that's what you're going to get recognised for. Exactly. And then you moved yeah. to LA. Yes. And then you did a few uh, jobs there. Yes. What was the choice to move back to South Africa as opposed to starting off a career in the States? Um... I met a lot of directors. I was very fortunate. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the experiences that I had there were like mind blowing. It's experiences that I can never ex um, explain to people, the people yeah. that I connected with, the people that I met. I was a casting director. So I ran into a lot of big directors and yeah. big actors and stuff and the advice that they'd give me. And um, I came back to South Africa on holiday. And during my visit, I spoke to one of the director friends of mine and he was like, hey, why don't you open up a production company in South Africa, yeah. okay? And then when you come down there and you're serious about what you want, then maybe we can talk about having projects done via you here in South Africa and stuff. Brilliant. So I did that, but then I ended up working and doing other work here. I ended up staying for way longer. And then um, I had other personal um, situations that I was going through at the time, which led me to go back to the States 
and I had my first little baba. Sky. <laughs> yes, Sky. Oh, sweet. What a beautiful and name. What thank was the, you. What was the meaning uh, about it? Growing up, I always, I had a very good friend in high school called Sky. Yeah. And I told myself that oh. if one day, if I have a child, her name is going to be Sky. And I didn't know what the meaning of it was. Yeah. Um, she <laughs> she oh, came she's into beautiful, my life. just like her mama. <laughs> she came into her life in a very special way um, where I was not expecting to have a child, but I had to have yeah. a child. And um, I decided to have a child and I did the whole sperm donut situation in the States and now she's here and she's the Amazing. best thing that would have ever happened in my life. Oh, that is incredible. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, she's honestly changed my life. And it's hard now, obviously, being an actress and a mother at the same time and trying to, like, be in her life It must stuff. be so hard. Like, I look at Pearl Tusi, who's yeah. now in the States doing so many things, and, you know, she's got a little girl as well. Yeah. It's so, it must be so difficult for a woman because it's yeah. so compromising, you know? It what is. You, I mean, how, do you, how are you able to keep that balance? I've got the best family ever. Yeah, you need a big support system, yeah. I think. If um, you... And without them, I don't know how I would have done it. Yeah. Like, from word go, through the whole process of everything happening, they were there to be like, we're going to be here for you, dude. Yeah. Like, just do what you need to do. And as long as it's a good decision and it's a decision that you're happy with, yeah. then we right there with you. Yeah. And I've got and you're brothers. very lucky, a lot of yeah, people don't have like that I've got brothers that are her, her dad, I've got my grandparents, I mean my parents who are now her grandparents and they, she's here in Cape Town with Amazing. my parents and they spoil her rotten. Like, <laughs> so when I come back, I have to deal with so much, but, but it's, it's, it's great, I'm lucky. I'm very fortunate yeah. and I'm very grateful for it's it. It's such a pleasure to, to meet you yeah. and to chat to you. You are absolutely beautiful Thank and I wish you. you the best in your career. Thank you so much. And I love your style. Your wardrobe <laughs> must be unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I really am grateful to be here. Yeah, thanks. All right, it's time for us to get cooking in the kitchen on Afternoon Express. All of our guests are so inspiring that I'm sure their bellies are really excited uh, to mm -hmm. kind of get something in for this weekend. Winter's kind of on the way and I know some of these fancy restaurants always put little petals and flowers over their dishes. The only flour I'm ever willing to eat is a cauliflower. And Clem is going to be showing uh, us how to put it into a soup, right? Exactly. But we we'll just talk about the fact that, like I said, winter is almost upon us. So soups, 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 everything yeah. soup related, Willie's have it covered. Great. So I'm kind of obsessed with soups. I really, really am. But not the old boring, let's just chuck everything in a pot and just boil it for hours. Like the really on trend and global soups that like focus on proper ingredients and working on real flavor, like those two bag bags on the end, uh -huh. you can actually bring them forward. I just want to talk about them a little bit. So Tom Ka and Tom Yum are two Asian-inspired soups. And oh, they're they two are... men, like Tom Ka and Tom Yum. Exactly. No. And then there's Su Yum, Su... No. That's terrible. I can't that read that up. Where that, came, where that went. All right, I see. <laughs> but what I love about it is the authentic flavor you get from these soups. It is mm. so, so real. Also, you notice the bag? Mm -hmm. Nice and easy. Yes. You can chuck it in your bag on the way to work. When you get to the office, drop it in the drawer. It's long life, so it'll be there forever. Oh, so it doesn't need to be refrigerated yeah. or frozen, all those other no, good not things. At all. Okay, great. What's really great is all you do is you take it out, pop it in the microwave, and a few minutes later, you're having a most amazing soup. Delicious. So, what's also cool is a 400 gram bag. So, one of this will feed one person, but you can like, double it up and like, make like, a proper meal out of it and feed you and your partner. Okay, great. Delicious. Yeah. Yummy, yummy, yum. Then, these guys, they talk about restaurants. Uh -huh. Restaurants are the kind of like, each restaurant now has a signature soup, uh -huh. but they make it very, very gourmet, very, you know. Yes. Elegant. Or, or you have a, or you, you, they call it a joint bon or whatever, and it's just what? like, it's basically just cauliflower, <laughs> cauliflower soup. There we go. So Willie's had these brand new ones now as well, also in the glass jars. Now soup in a glass jar for me is just like, it takes me back to like when I was a child and my granny used to make soup for like the whole neighborhood. Uh -huh. Everybody gets a jar. Store them in a jar. Ah. There you go. <laughs> but the flavors, I mean, there's a prawn bisque, and honestly, the prawn bisque is so, you, you'd swear you're eating at a restaurant. Sorry, what is a bisque? It's kind of a, 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 a seafoody broth, slightly creamy, but just intense with seafood flavor. Yeah, okay, cool. It's so good. And then I've also got the Thai chicken soup, which is really, really great. Yummy. They're all delicious. So Dan, you're a healthy young man. Yes, I am. Whoa, and, <laughs> I to think I am. <laughs> so if you're watching your calorie intake, yeah. Willie's also now has soup specifically for someone like you, where the kilojoules have been controlled. 
Oh, I see. Which means you can basically have 10 cans. Because you never really know what's inside soups. I mean, everything's all blended together. You can't even see the ingredients exactly. in the latter like or the latter like. Talking about not knowing what's inside your soups, the fact that actually all the ingredients are listed on these cans, so you can see exactly what's in there. Okay, cool. <laughs> so also, with the new range of cans as well, of canned soups, I have to talk about this one, the Mexican one, is my absolute, absolute fa Yummy. favorite, and it's gonna be my lunch today. Great. Okay, so you're gonna have this delicious cauliflower soup I'm gonna make you. Yes, and, and you're gonna, gonna have, have that one. There we well, go. What I think is really cool about all these flavors is they've got that spicy element to them. They've all got like a kind of Thai or Mexican or some kind of spicy mm -hmm. element. Very so cool. what we're doing with our yeah. cauliflower soup. Exactly, so let's get start. The cauliflower soup, we're gonna take a bit of a spin. We're gonna do like a creamy base soup, but then add a lot of spice to the topping. Great. So let's get started on that. Can you pass me the cauliflower piece? I can indeed. Start with the topping. By the way, if you guys want to know how we do all these ingredients, maybe you're watching the recipe now with a notebook and pen, please don't stress yourself. Uh, the easiest way to get all of our details for these recipes is to SMS the keyword dinner to 33650. You'll be basically sent an SMS with all the ingredients and a link to the recipe. So please don't worry about a pen and paper. I've had lots of people approach me uh, in the streets always say like, oh, guys, like I can't get it down in time. Just send that SMS and uh, you'll get all the details on your mobile device. Sure. Cool, now you're gonna help me. I've got a can of butter beans here. Can you add it to our bowl? Just one can? Yeah, just one can. So what happens is we're actually using these ingredients in the soup. But I want to create a bit of texture, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of spice by roasting it off. Okay. Um, so, turmeric going turmeric, in. Turmeric, I was gonna say. I don't know what this I one looks like. Is this a mixed spice? It is. It's an 11 in 1 spice mix. So there's a lot of flavor in there. That's mm. going in. Mm -hmm. And you get that at Willie's as well. Garlic. Garlic, yum, yum. Yeah, yeah. And then let's go with some olive oil. Olive Cayenne oil. pepper. How much olive oil? Say when. That's good. Then some cayenne pepper. That I can do for you. That's Where's right the over cayenne there. pepper? Oh, this is going to add a nice color to your cauliflower. And some nice heat. Say that's when. good, that's good. Little lemon juice. What about these guys? Thyme. I'm going to actually use the thyme in Later. the soup. Cool, cool. So what I want to do now is just add this to a roasting tray and I'm going to roast this at 200 for about half an hour, uh -huh. but you want it to really, really char. That's the thing, it has to char, and then we're gonna, that's the flavor that we want. So when we come back, I'm gonna show you how we use this and how we make our soup. Yummy, 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 you got soup in my tummy and I feel like loving you. And it's a weekend, it's really simple to make, and obviously with winter just around the corner, uh, get all these soup recipes in your repertoire, get them frozen and keep them. It's one of the best things about soups in the winter season. So winter is on the way and so is Mother's Day. Jeannie's got details on how you can spoil your mother. So Mother's Day is just over a week away and I'm sure many of you are going to leave the gift shopping to the very last minute. Well, don't. Why not spoil your mum to the ultimate lint, lindor, high tea? Now this Mother's Day, lindor is hosting seven luxurious high teas at various uh, state-of-the-art venues around South Africa. And if you are in Quizaloon Hotel, you can visit the Oyster Box Hotel or the Beverly Hills, the Sugar Club in Gauteng, the Fairlawns Boutique Hotel, the River Meadow Manor or Marion and Nickel. And in the Western Cape, you can experience a high tea at the Twelve Apostles or at the Cellars Hon Nort Hotel. Visit afternoonexpress.co.za for a list of the venues and details on how to purchase tickets and make sure you make this Mother's Day extra special. We'll be right back after this. Say yes to the smart snack. So good to have you back with us on Afternoon Express as we prepare you for an incredible weekend ahead. As you know, one of my favorite spots to be in a house is always going to be the kitchen. I know it's probably yours too, but now, there's some objects around the kitchen that you think are obvious, right? But what if I told you that perhaps this chopping board wasn't a chopping board, but was more a toffee that was edible? Recently, I got to be at the launch of Caesar Stone's three brand new surfaces, and they had conceptual artist Francesca Sarti create meals that were in fact edible, that don't look edible, and we got the exclusive. Blurring the lines between food and design is how Italian stylist, designer and foodie Francesca Sarti describes her work. Inspired by Caesar Stone's three brand new colours and their nature-inspired names, she's put together a stylish food and design playground, but for adults. Francesca, I'd love to know, at what point does an architect like yourself decide that she no longer wants to use traditional materials and chooses food instead? <laughs> I know it could sound strange, but I feel there is a connection between food and architecture because in a way spaces, they are activated through food. Because food is what like really uh, make people interact with each other. So I've always seen this connection. While in this case, the starting point was the, the three new colors 
of sea stone. So moorland fog, um, the rugged concrete, and Mont Blanc. So starting from a new colors um, and transforming it like in an edible experience was the task. You're looking very calm, but somebody's got so much to do before this evening. So I'm going to leave you to it, and I cannot wait to see what you've got in store for us. Looking forward to seeing you tonight. Hanori, with two great brands, Francesca and Caesarstone, you must have been thrilled to receive this brief. Well, we were super excited. Um, we've been following Francesca's work for a while. We actually worked with her a couple of years ago. So it was amazing to have the opportunity to work with her again. So normally what we do is we start um, looking at the space that we work with. So here, we're lucky we've got a quite an industrial looking space um, with amazing high ceilings, fantastic natural light, so that was a big win. And then um, we looked at the three beautiful new colors of Caesar Stone and used that as a, as a starting point. You've worked on many different installations. I mean, what made this one so unique? The great thing about this one was that they, we were three teams working across three continents. So it was this massive intercontinental co collaboration. Francesca was working on something in Mexico at the time where we were putting all of this together. Her team was sourcing props in London for us. And then we had two teams here sourcing in Cape Town and in Stellenbosch. So um, it was great seeing everybody sending all their images to one WhatsApp group and getting this amazing mood board going. It was a really great concept on paper, or I guess in your case it was the WhatsApp group, but what did you do to bring all of that to life? So we used the beautiful names of the stone, um, which is all natural, so it's Moorland Fog, uh, Rugged Concrete and Mont Blanc as inspiration. So we, we went with all natural elements, like we're going to be doing big piles of chalk and stones, and then we're also using Mervyn House's beautiful ceramics. Well, it seems like the installation is in safe hands. I'm going to get dressed to the nines to make sure that we get ready for one sensory experience not to be missed. Francesca, what are you hoping that the guests are experiencing when interacting with your various installations? I hope guests will not be too shy and they will get their hands dirty. Had like a, an experience of the three materials, but through the food and different textures. They always say the best things come in threes. So talk us through your three different installations here. And, and so for the three islands, from, for the uh, Moorland Fog, the Rugged Concrete and the Mont Blanc, we have created three different installations that are inspired by these materials. In the Moorland Fog, we got inspired by the Scotland, of course. So, and so a very humid and countryside. And so we have um, decided to use a lot of herbs. And then even the eggs have been boiling for a long time in a a herbal infusion. Uh, for rugged concrete, we have a cheese with ashes, like in the past, uh, when cheese was uh, preserved with ashes. A huge uh, slab of toffee, black toffee, so, and guests are invited to play with it. So we're gonna break it and taste, uh, like really treating it as an edible material. And the last one is Mont Blanc, which is more like a, the whitish uh, island. And so we have this uh, kind of cloud of Pashmak. Pashmak is a special candy floss that is typical from the Middle East. And it really looks like a wool. So I quite like it because at first sight, you, are, you don't know, you don't really understand if it's uh, uh, edible or not. So I hope uh, guests are feeling like kids again and enjoy this tasteful playground. covered potato there we go. and then here this is an ash preserved cheese so she mentioned that it's an ancient way to preserve cheese and she incorporated it into her um, presentation it's really cool that we get to eat in such a fun interesting way because you know we're used to serious food so this is a really cool way to eat and I think it's fun so I think what's really unique is how they've really combined the food with this whole launch I think the food is amazingly architectural in its design and its uniqueness and I think that really captures the essence of what Caesar Stone is about and how we as designers can incorporate this in our architecture. I think the evening went amazingly well. It was really great to see so many people from the design world. Um, I just love the different food. It just worked so well together to put on, to showcase the Caesar Stone new colors in a different way because they're different colors and they're amazing. It was just whimsical. Well, we hope that Caesar Stone, Francesca and Hanari have inspired you to think outside of the box with their food and design playground. If you want any more details on how to think outside of the box, head over to the Caesar Stone blog. 
And usually it's bad manners to play with your food, but I thought I'd leave that up to these guests. So it's a Friday afternoon, and that means we're back again for another round of Web Whiz Quiz. Well, now last week I was put to my paces in this very tough internet quiz, but I'd let this week I get to be the game host, and of course, Danilo, you're going to be playing opposite Warren. How much do you guys know about the internet? Oh my gosh, I know about digital, but the internet? I know how to check in. <laughs> I was so online. useless last week. I was like, my life is the internet, but I knew absolutely nothing about it. <laughs> so there's a few rules of the game. There are a number of internet-based uh, internet questions with multiple choice answers. And the first person to get the answer needs to hit the buzzer and share their answer. Okay. Then after you give your answer, our resident um, open serve technician and internet expert will provide us with the correct answer. Let's meet her. Good afternoon. I'm Priti Kumalo. I'm your resident open safe technician. We all use the internet every day, but how much do we really know about it? Let's find out and good luck. All right, let's start with the very first question. And it is, a line speed is measured in MBPS. What does MBPS stand for? And here are your options. Is it A, megabits per second? B, megabytes per second? C, major bytes per second, or D, mega buzz per second? <laughs> I'm gonna take that one. Yeah, you got the mega buzz. I got the mega buzz in there. <laughs> I'm gonna take a guess uh, because I don't actually know the difference between bytes and bits, but I think it's, I would be mega bits per second A. MBPS stands for mega bits per second. When OpenServe started providing broadband services many years ago, the highest speed possible in SA, were well below one megabits per second. Today, you will be pleased to know that OpenServe makes it possible for consumers to access speed up to 100 megabits per second in some areas. Hmm. Brilliant, and now our next question. What does Wi-Fi stand for? Oh no. <laughs> Is it A, wireless fidelity, <laughs> B, wireless fiction, C, wire fire, or D, nothing. Yes, Warren. This is a guess, man. I'll say D. Nothing. nothing. That Wi-Fi stands for nothing? Yeah, it's just Wi-Fi. I, I, I think so too. I, I also, I'm, I'm with you on this one. I've never, wireless fiction. Okay, the answer is, to, is D, nothing. Yeah, well done, congratulations. But how can it be nothing? It's Wi-Fi, it's just Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wi-Fi ask us the question, then, Jeannie. No, Wi-Fi is a Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Let's see what our expert has to say. Wi-Fi is, in fact, a made-up word. It doesn't stand for anything. Wi-Fi is a wireless technology that allows computers and other devices to connect to a network. There is still hardware that makes this possible. But it basically means you can walk around with your phone or tablet and still connect to the internet. All right, so the next question is, what is DSL? Oh, no. Is it A, digital subscriber line, B, domestic server line, C, dual system language, or D, developer static line? Okay, you can take <laughs> that one. I don't know. Tell us, Warren. I will say A, because everything is digital. So, yeah, if that makes sense. That's not enough of a reason. Oh, I pick it up. And in fact, the answer is A, Digital subscriber. Ah, line. Well done. <laughs> Jeez, Let's okay. have a look and see what our expert is to say. DSL stands for Digital Subscriber Line. On our OpenSurf network, it refers to the broadband connectivity options provided on our Copper Access network. These options can reach speed of up to 40 megabits per second. Wow. You guys are very good. You know a lot about the interwebs. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next question. Which one of these statements is false? A. Fiber is faster than DSL. B. Fiber connectivity uses fiber optic cables. C. Fiber lines transmit data at the speed of light. Or D. Only businesses can access fiber no! connectivity. Warren? Well, the answer is D, Jimmy D. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
only businesses can access fiber connectivity. That's true because I've got it at home. Uh, that's what's false because you've got it at home. Yeah. Let's see what our tech expert has to say. The false statement is clearly that only businesses can access fiber connectivity. Fiber has been rolled out at a tremendous pace across the country in business parks, private homes, and leafy suburbs and gated communities. All right, let's get to our next question. In what year was the first tweet tweeted? Oh, I'm just thinking when I signed up. Is it A, 2002, B, 2006, C, 2001, or D, 2003? He's Warren, get... that's yours. Uh, you know, I jumped onto Twitter very late, but I'd like to think it's 2006. Because 2003 must have been early. We were still Get on Facebook. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> are, you still not, are, you, are you not on Facebook? No, I am on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> but like, I think it's 2006. And you would be correct. Oh. The first tweet was tweeted in 2006. Well done. <laughs> like your means. So. Let's check in with our tech expert. What will the internet be without Twitter? The first tweet was tweeted in 2006 by Twitter co creator Jack Dorsey. Oh, my word. Oh, oh learning lots. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Now, well done, guys. I hope that you all learn a little bit more about the internet today. But we'll be back next week, same time, same place, for another round of the Web Whiz Quiz. We'll be right back. OpenServe, South Africa's largest telecoms infrastructure provider. Well, welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's a Friday and we're getting ready for the weekend and it's time for our favourite part of the show where we get to ask or answer questions that you guys feel towards us. And it's time for our first question from you at home. Danilo, I would like to ask you, why do you not cook on your own in the kitchen? <laughs> because you'll burn the place down. Yeah, I was about to say, it's all a lie. My entire life is a lie. Clem tells me what to do and I am just the puppet. That is the real reason. No, I, why don't I like cooking in the kitchen by myself? I'm really scared of messing things up. I like the putting music on. I like cooking at home and learning skills. So um, to actually do the cooking myself means that all the pressure's on me. If it doesn't come out nicely, then I'm just a bit like... Shame. So I baked cupcakes for my godson this past, well, a weekend ago. And... Um, I <laughs> pulled them out of the oven and he looked so depressed and he was You like, make me rusks! <laughs> <laughs> so there's a real reason why we presenters on the show and not chefs on the show. Let's catch up with our next question. I'd like to ask you, Nidhi, what's her favourite sports car? <gasps> My favourite sport. Oh, I am a car girl. I'm basically like Je Jeannie Clarkson, Jeannie Clarkson. I absolutely <laughs> I love, love cars. But I think McLaren is unbelievable. The Bentley Continental GT is unbelievable mm. as well. Um, a Lamborghini, of course, I'd love to own one day. Oh, I love that. And then the new C-Class convertible. That's awesome. You know what I what I did was I when I bought my first car like ever in my life it was a red car and I called it my Ferrari because it was wasn't very much of a Ferrari but it was red and I was like oh it's my first Ferrari <laughs> so I've owned a Ferrari I was gonna tell everybody that let's field our next question. If I could ask um, Danilo, I'd ask who, do, who does he look up to in the entertainment industry? Hmm. That's a very simple answer, Probably honestly. Me. I've been ridiculed with this before for not looking at somebody locally, but I think internationally speaking, Ryan Seacrest has always been a guy that I've looked up to. This man is, uh, he's a producer, he owns some of the biggest entertainment companies, he's on air, radio, television, he's working in the digital spaces, and he's just so chilled out. He doesn't have to have an ego to be good at what he does. This man just knows that he is good and just continues to bring really cool teams around him. I'd love to be the Ryan Seacrest of SA. And yours? You. Oh, get over yourself. <laughs> that was the extra reverse when I started on here. It was like you were like the ultimate person to look up to. So it's, yeah, it's very Thank exciting. You, very you don't much. have a, like an idol, somebody you really look no, up to. No, you I are don't. that person for yourself. No, but I mean, I think, um, yeah, you've got to be that for yourself. Love it. Awesome. Oh. Let's take one more question. It came from Sevashni Perumal, who says, which are you more likely to fight for, love or money, and why? I won't fight for either one of them. Really? No, because money isn't something that you must fight for. Yes. Money is something that can come and go and you must earn it with passion and you work hard to get it, but you don't fight for it. Mm -hmm. And you can't fight for love because love is, that's the opposite of what love is. 
Really? If, if you have to fight for it, it's not yours and it's not real. Okay. I'm going to maybe challenge that because I hear where you're coming from, from that perspective. But I think the other side for me is always uh, love gets misconstrued as this nice feeling. Like love is a really good feeling. Love in so many ways takes a lot of sacrifice and a lot of fighting because you've got to almost fight yourself in the process to say like, I'm actually here to serve the other person. And how the heck am I going to do that if I'm not fighting for it the entire time? No, so, I think it should be like, it should be both thing. ways and it shouldn't be difficult. It should okay. be a beautiful, wonderful experience. Lovely. I'd love for you guys to head over to our social accounts. Use the hashtag Afternoon Express on Twitter as well as on Facebook. What would you fight more for, love or money? And how does that work for you? We'd really love to know. But definitely, I think Jeannie and I can both agree, never fight for money. It's not worth it. More cooking coming up after the break. Plus, next week, we'll be taking more of your questions for our Ask the Presenters. And we're back in the kitchen making a warm and soulful cauliflower soup with Clem after these. Moms know all about crazy moments, busy days and sleepless nights. But there are also beautiful moments between moms and their children which make for precious memories. You could win tickets to a Lint Lindor high tea with your mom at one of six luxurious venues around SA in a region of your choice when you share a hashtag blissful moment on the Afternoon Express Facebook page. Treat yourself and your mom and share your hashtag blissful moment now to win with Lint Lindor and Afternoon Express. Lindor from Lint. A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. And I think it's an app that I say a warm welcome back because winter is just around the corner. And in the loft kitchen today, Clem is going to be showing us how to make a delicious cauliflower soup to warm us up over this winter season. And I'm taking out half of your props today I just see. to kind of make it more of a challenge. Earlier in the show, we got to grill our cauliflower. We spiced it up deliciously. It's looking amazing. And all that's left to do is actually to create the soup elements of it. Exactly. So let's start off. I've got a pot with some olive oil in it. And I've got some leeks. I like using leeks in soups. It's like, I just, it's just so soft and gentle compared to normal onion. Yes, it can be soft and gentle. Okay, I'm fine yeah. with that. I'm fine with that. It's also especially if you're creating creamy sauces, which you're yes. doing today. A leek is a much less intimidating thing to put inside. Leeks are not intimidating. Yes. There we go. <laughs> so in go the leeks, and we turn up the heat a little bit. Have we got heat? There we go. And some garlic going in. Yummy. So more fragrances. Those are all of your, what do you call the aromatics? Are those the aromatics. aromatics. You've got it. So now I've got my leftover, my other, um, Cauliflower, like what, what, what is the vegetable of the day? <laughs> cauliflower. That's so white broccoli, go I guess you can call it that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna go, so it's gonna start like, also frying those slightly and picking up that leek and garlic flavor. That can charness, get, yeah. Exactly, can I get those beans? Sure, more of them, more butter beans. I love beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I've been there, Yeah. in that space that you're in now where you like those beans. <laughs> what, are you, what are your favorite beans? I don't know if I really have like a favorite, but I enjoy Mexican food with a black bean. The black bean yeah. is one of my favorite things to eat. And then also, I don't know, do peas and stuff count as beans? I'll, I'll allow it today. Like green beans, those I'll things are really it. nice. Yeah. Melissa's got those thin ones, you know, those like thin... The extra fine, fine beans. beans. Oh, those oh, are the best. Goodness. Raw. Yes, don't cook them. <laughs> okay, cool. That's frying up, that's doing its thing. So, that spice you asked about earlier, that 11 in 1. Yes. That's in the green box. Is it this one? Can I get it back? No, really, this is like your go-to spice that you should always have in the house. I'm having a good laugh because honestly this reminds me so much of my childhood because this 11 in 1 reminds me of one of those console games. You used to like plug the thing in and you plug it in with those like things you used to pull out and then you used to play your games like 11 in 1. And when it didn't work you take it out and you go yeah. and you put it back and you smack Remember it in. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So this 11 in 1 spice which is also really great in popcorn. Is it? So oh, good. Because it's fine enough to go on popcorn. It is. So that's, that's taste just... a bit. I'll tell you what yeah, it tastes please, like. Yeah please do. Mm. So mm. let's see what kind of spices they've got in here. They've got... Well, I wouldn't put this on popcorn. Oh, it's very gourmet. Very gourmet. It's very gourmet. Are you it's, not? it's nice, but it's like curry powder. I almost like curry no, popcorn. No, it's not. So oh, it's paprika, yeah. some garlic, it's, it's onion, coriander, cumin, ginger, oregano, white pepper, thyme, basil, <clears> chili. <throat> it's not like a win. Not, not for popcorn, honestly. Like, I'm either sweet, sweet and sour, what? Sweet and sour chives or chives? No. Sweet cream and chives is the best, or salt and vinegar. Best popcorn flavors okay. ever. All right, some chicken stock going in. Okay. Uh, and again, chicken is basically like the, what did you call it's it? It's the chicken of, of, the food. of the food industry, all right? It tastes like anything. Anything tastes yeah. like chicken, and chicken tastes like anything. It's quite a neutral flavor, but you get okay. that savory note that you want. So then salt and pepper can go in. Here we go. There's some okay. salt and some pepper. Go for it. So salt. Is that enough? A little bit more? A little more. There we go. And That's then enough. some pepper. Ta-da! 
We're just in lots of finesse. You, you gotta are so getting all that pepper in your butt <laughs> face. How is that even happening? You don't have Perfect. to do so well much finesse at home. Just do it the normal well way. Well done. Okay, okay, cool. So what you need to do now, pop the lid on and that, that continues simmering. Zero finesse in that. Zero no, finesse. I'm, I'm, I'm still impressed. I'm still impressed. Sure. That's going to continue simmering until the cauliflower is so tender mm -hmm. that it literally just mashes with a fork. Oh, okay. Cool. So you want it really, really, really soft. Very, very soft. And it looks like ah. that. So now I've got some cream. Over there. Which I can pass to you. And you can add that for me, and I'm gonna blitz it all up. I got my lime and my coconut, I blitz it all up. Exactly. All cauliflower and the cream, and you. It's it's so, so, so creamy. So the beans give you that creamy texture, so same as the cauliflower, and then you go in and add more cream to it. Okay. So it's really, really luxurious. What happens if I don't have a, a stick blender? Can I pour it into a normal blender, like you another can. kind of blender? Just don't put, don't, don't put that lid on, it's gonna come flying off. Why? Because of the heat and the, of the expansion. Heat. Okay, so cool. manage the heat that's gonna be escaping. Okay. So uh, if you really, really are into your soups, Taste Magazine, the next issue is gonna be packed full of the most amazing soup recipes. Yeah, man. So everybody needs to get that. Just to, everybody, everybody needs like three good soup recipes. Yeah, totally. In your household, at least once. My mother used to freeze a whole bunch of soups and just unpack them. Mm -hmm. uh, try and make these fresh, please. Perfect. Don't do that to your kids. Cool. So, Dan, let's dish up. So, I've got the gray bowl. Can I use that? Sure. And a ladle. And a ladle. Or a soup spoon. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. So, oh, what, I call it, a, what you call it, what's that kid? Please, sir, can I have some more? What's his name? Oliver, Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist. Is that what Oliver you call Twist it? Oliver Twist spoon. Whenever I think of that spoon, I think of Oliver Twist. All right, now, whenever I see the spoon, I'm going to think about you. Okay, great. Uh, 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 I don't want to be thought of in spoons. No. I don't want to be thought of that. I do not no. want that to be the thought. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being the small spoon Delicious. as well. Now, what happens okay. to the cauliflower we made earlier? How do you Dad, use that? Here it comes. Oh. So look at that. I'm going to try some before I put it down. Oh, yes, I'd like to steal this little piece here. Mm. So this is the, these are the beans and the cauliflower that are roasted with those um, curry spices. Oh, mm, mm, mm. It is so fragrant. So you get what I'm saying about the spiciness cutting through the creaminess of the soup? That is delicious. It adds a nice little bit of heat to different forms of texture. And voila, ladies and gentlemen, your delicious cauliflower soup. Decadent, tasty, perfect for the winter seasons on their way. And if obviously you just tuned into the show now, you don't know how we made those cauliflowers, you want to know how we did all of this and put it together. Here's a quick recap. <laughs> and just like that, we're getting ready for the winter season. Soups are the ideal, and this is gourmet. Make sure you guys uh, obviously try this at home. Dig in, guys. Of course, yeah. I see some cauliflower there. Mm. So yummy. I've already tasted the cauliflower. Mm. It's quite spicy, so. Oh, this is so Ooh. good. Mm. Mm. This is so good, and it looked really easy to make, so even I can do it. Do you think I can handle it? Absolutely. I definitely okay, think you can. Yeah. If you want to try and make it at home, the simplest way to get all the details for this recipe is if you SMS, go to your little SMS mm -hmm. thing and you type in the it's keyword like dinner, dinner, you send it to 33650, and you'll get an SMS with all the details and like link to the recipe and the shopping list, etc. But don't forget, it will cost you 1 Rand 50, and the three SMSs won't apply. But what's 1 Rand 50 when you can have dinner like this served for Amazing. all your guests? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so, so good. Yeah. So, I want to ask you, what are any, you know, exciting plans coming up? I've got three South African movies that I'm in. Uh, Ooh, proudly awesome. South African, three movies. They're all releasing this year. Amazing. One is called The Number, one is called Vaya. I was nominated for Best Supporting Actor for Vaya at the Nigerian Africa Magic Reviewers' Choice Awards. Amazing. And I'm also trying to get fit and well, try to look like Shaka Zulu for a character that I'm doing later this year, but it's not wow. Shaka Zulu. It's not okay. Shaka Zulu. Oh, okay. <laughs> That'll be... Epic though. Yeah, the oh. eight pegs, yeah. the lean muscles, yeah, good everything. For you. So, Premier invite. Oh, we'll be watching. Thank you. Uh, we'll <laughs> Deal. And yourself? 
Um, wow, how do you top that? <laughs> um, well, I'm busy on a series, which I'll start shooting next, actually this month. Are we in May yet? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I'm doing like private projects with Brilliant. my family. We are a family of artists. Um, I'm sadly, we over so time though, but thank you so much okay. to all of our guests for coming through. It's been absolutely wonderful. And of course, we'll be back on Monday, same time, same place. Until then, good night and happy eating. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Another feel-good production.